Hi, it's Emily from Bite Size Vegan, and welcome to another Vegan Nugget. Today, I'm honored to be joined by my friend and mentor, Gary Rofsky, who has graciously agreed to be here and answer questions that you, the Bite Size Vegan audience, have sent to me. I'm going to be releasing this interview in a series of videos, so be sure to stay tuned to the channel. Gary, I just wanted to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here and answer some of these questions. Anything for you, Emily. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about your own journey to veganism? Was there like an inciting event and what contributed to your decision to change? I'll try to do the quick version of my story. My stepdad is a clown in the circus. He took me backstage when I was around 23 to see the elephants. I was excited. I did not know what was going on backstage. Immediately when I went backstage, I knew something was awry, something was wrong, elephants were in chains, they were acting neurotically, swaying back and forth. Uh, from there, I went to a slaughterhouse in Detroit, Thornapple Valley Pig Slaughterhouse, for six weeks straight every day for two to six hours every day as a meat, dairy, and egg eater. Still a stubborn person, that's why I actually work well with people. I know what it's like not wanting to give up. Uh, certain foods that you love and by the way you actually don't have to give up those foods you're just veganizing those foods but anyways I knew I had to make a decision I, I was uh, I witnessed the Holocaust for those six weeks straight uh, and I'm Jewish and I don't say that term lightly but Auschwitz is still alive Birkenau is still here uh, we did not eradicate concentration camps uh, we just have different victims inside these camps just different victims same actions being you know same actions going on beings being treated like nothing like they're worthless like their lives don't matter people mocking them while they're killing them and torturing them people ignoring their plight uh, we're just we're, we're just doing it to the animals and we started on the animals too by the way that's why we've learned how to how to kill and harm and enslave each other so efficiently we practiced on the animals back to my other point about getting rid of speciesism then you wouldn't have racism and sexism uh, so that's my story I saw the uh, pigs at the slaughterhouse I knew I had to make a decision was I going to be their friend or their enemy uh, I had chose to be their friend and not their enemy I did not want to be a two-legged devil to these creatures anymore uh, keep this in mind too. Uh, there's a quote from a bishop from Britain, William Ralph Inge, I-N-G-E, in an 18th century sermon. This man actually said, we have treated our distant cousins in fur and feathers so horribly that beyond a doubt, if they ever formed an organized religion, the devil would be depicted in human form. It breaks my heart to hear that statement because it cannot be impugned. We must be devils to them. We cut things off their bodies while they're fully conscious. We cut them up at a slaughterhouse while they're fully conscious. We steal their babies, we rape them. We light them on fire for burn research. We make them do stupid idiotic tricks for entertainment. We must be the worst beings ever in the eyes of the animals and it is my goal in life and I know yours too the metal chefs too and all the vegans on this planet to change that perception to let the animals know that we're not all evil we're not all bad sadly the majority of humans are bad and evil though but I don't think it was meant to be that way and what we try to do is we try to awaken people out of that soporific state get them back to reality take them back to that conscience that they had when they were young when they were a kid when when they were in all the animals when animals were everything when all your stories when you're growing up think about it all the childhood stories all the movies all about animals but we don't tell the kids what they're eating once in a blue moon I get invited into a, a kindergarten first or second grade class and of course the first thing is you can't show slaughterhouse videos they're gonna have nightmares and you can't tell them what meat is and I just don't understand though so I have to lie to them why do we lie to kids lying is part of the game too. misinformation because I did, of course, I, I violate all rules. So even when they tell me that, I still went in the classrooms with first and second graders over the years and I said, how many people uh, like Babe? They're like, I love Babe, the pig in the movie. I'm like, ah, oh, Babe is great. I said, how many people had a hot dog recently? I love hot dogs. That's Babe. <gasps> so all of a sudden, though, the teacher's like, no, no. All of a sudden, I'm a bad guy because I told them the truth. 
but I'd be a good guy if I lied to them. So just trying to awaken people. Just try to bring them back to reality because people definitely aren't living in reality. We talk about fantasy. I know fantasy land's a fun place to be. I was there for 25 years. Gary, I just want to thank you so much for, for giving us your time. And I've been asked on behalf of, of so many of my viewers to just thank you for, for everything that you do. So thank you so much. Thank you. Keep on. Everybody pass your stuff around. It's tight stuff. Honestly, bitesizevegan.com. Share it. I hope you enjoyed hearing Gary's conversion story and ethics discussion. I'd love to hear your story and your thoughts on the issues addressed in this interview segment. Let me know in the comments below. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, and please share it around to spread the message. Stay tuned to the Bite Size Vegan channel for more installations of my interview with Gary. And if you're new, be sure to hit that big red subscribe button down there for more awesome vegan content every Monday, Wednesday, and some Friday. I'll also be posting bonus footage and answers that don't make it to the channel in the VIV area of bitesizevegan.com, which you can access for free when you sign up for the Nugget newsletter, which you can do by clicking below. And for even more bonus and behind-the-scenes footage, and to support the spreading of the vegan message, click on the Nugget Army logo over there, or either one of the support links in the video description. Now go live vegan, and I'll see you soon.